Good morning, everyone. Warm welcome to our teen service, Hekima teen service, on this very good Sunday, the fifth day of seventh month of the year 2020. Welcome everyone who is joining us uh, via Zoom, and even those joining us via Facebook from different parts of the world. It's a pleasure to see you, a pleasure to have you join us, a pleasure to have you allow us into your space. Thank you so much. And uh, permit me to just uh, say that let's start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this wonderful morning. Such a great and incredible opportunity that you've given to us to just fellowship uh, as teens and uh, across different parts of the world, oh God. We thank you because you've given us this place. You've given us this opportunity, even by a virtual uh, church, Lord. Thank you uh, for your presence that is with us. Even as we come into this space, to be uh, taught of you by the help of your spirit, to be challenged, to be reminded of how we need to uh, uh, grow in this season. We thank you because of your presence that is with us. I want to commit every person joining us, oh Lord. May you minister to us, oh God. May you help our minds to focus on that which you're saying this morning. We bless you and we honor you because you're with us. We invite your presence to be with us and Lord, help us to tap into that which you have for us in store this morning. We say this, believing and trusting in your son, Jesus, uh, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome once more. I just want to, again, say it's a wonderful morning and welcome you guys. Welcome everyone joining us on Facebook. Welcome everyone joining us via uh, Zoom. And uh, I want to give way to our songbird, the beautiful one, uh, Flora. Flora, I'm sure you're ready. Yes. So, um, Flora, you can uh, run with it. Thank you, Flora. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see yet another day. <coughs> Sorry. Um, this day, as we gather, um, I'm praying that we may be ready. We may have teachable and receptive hearts, even through the songs that we're going to sing today, and that God may may be with us, may fill us with His Spirit, and He may walk with us, even through this crisis that we're experiencing right now. So yeah, so maybe Charuzi, the first song. Screen share for us. <clears throat> okay, this is this song is called I Give You My Heart. So yeah. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you, all that is within me. I give you praise, all that I adore is in you, Lord, I give you my heart, give my soul. I live for you, our Lord, every breath that I take, moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me, 
Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All that is within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Have your way in me, Lord. I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way in me, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way in me, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way in me. Lord, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify you, God. We say thank you for the gift of life. Father, we say thank you for the gift of wisdom, Father, upon our lives. Father, pray that you may continue to walk with us, Father, each and every day of our life, so that we may live to serve you, Father, and do what is right, O God. Father, this day, Father, we say thank you because you enabled us this day, Father. It's because of your love. It's because of your mercy. It's because of your grace, O God, that we are alive. Father, they don't take it for granted, Father. But we say thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. So now the second song. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring. Something that's worth that will bless your heart. 
I'll bring you more than I saw for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart when the music fades and all is stripped away and is simply calm, longing just to breathe something that's of worth. So bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made in. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made in, when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus, King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all the have is yours. Every single breath, king of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made in. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. And it's all about you. It's 
It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made in. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Just uh, for about a minute, let's just allow our thoughts to simmer in his presence. It said that the Judah will always go fast. Judah here represents worship, praise. So let's just, for a couple, just one minute, allow your thoughts to just see my in his presence lord we thank you thank you for your presence that is invoked just by the praise and worship that we've had this morning oh lord just take full control of our thoughts let your spirit your holy spirit uh, just uh, speak to us oh god any anxiety any fear uh any unanswered concerns oh, that might be in our hearts might be in our minds oh god let your Holy Spirit deal with them and help us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your faith. Thank you for the worship. Lord, we bless you because you have no presence. We are transformed. Thank you, Lord, this morning. We celebrate you. We celebrate your love. We celebrate your presence, Lord. Oh we are so grateful for you. We are so grateful for us to be here again. We honor you. We say thank you. Your presence in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much. Uh, Laura, uh, can you hear me? No, cannot hear you well. Okay, uh, let me just uh, can is it much better? Sorry for any interference. Anyway, uh I just want to uh, welcome uh, all of us once again, those joining us uh, even via Facebook and even those on Zoom. Um, is our teen service, as I said, is the fifth day of July, 2020. I uh, just want to uh, welcome our teacher Oliver, who is going to deliver to us a word. Teacher Oliver, I'm sure you're ready. Teacher Oliver. If you can hear me, uh, I just want to welcome Teacher Oliver to, to take over, to minister to us. Teacher Oliver. Thank you so much. As we wait for Teacher Oliver, let's just get ready. You can probably unveil by turning on your video and your mic, Teacher Oliver. Others are welcome, everyone. I can see uh, quite a number. Thank you. We dropped Tisha Oliver, but he's back. I think he dropped off a bit, but he's back. Uh, some technical challenges here and there. Uh, well done, Tisha Oliver. Welcome back. Um, I just want to pass on, uh, pass on the baton to you. Uh, you're going to meet Tisha Oliver. Uh, you yeah. okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. How are you? 
How is everybody? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How has been your week? Super. Good morning. Okay. I, mine has also been excellent. I just want to share my screen uh, so that we can continue from where we left last Sunday. Okay, um, can we see that? Yes. Okay, excellent. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, we started last week on the topic of uh, peer pressure, dealing with peer pressure. And we, we wanted, we began looking at the life of Peter the Apostle and we saw some of the challenges that he, he went through. And we're going to continue in this session based on that. I hope um, uh, teacher Rosie kindly uh, help me with the time so I, I do not overreach like last Sunday. So okay. please, uh, I won't go back to some of the things. I just want to recap some of the things we shared and then we'll go back, we'll go into the meat of today's uh, message. So please, I hope everybody has a Bible next to you. Okay? Because I'll, I'll be calling on some of you guys to help me read certain scriptures in the Bible today. So essentially, um, we talked about the mouse with four tails. Do you remember that? Is there anybody who wasn't here last Sunday? Remember the story of the mouse with four tails? And the children kept laughing at him and he kept cutting his tail to try and, impl and, imp to try and impress those children. He cut the first tail, he cut the second tail, he cut the third tail, but still the children were still laughing at him. Then finally he went and cut the last tail, the fourth tail. And after cutting the, the, the fourth tail, still the children laughed at him. And they said, oh, look, a mouse with no tail. That's still a very funny mouse. And they still kept laughing at him and he went away dejected and disappointed. So we're going to refer to this little story in a short while back. We also talked about, we also uh, defined peer pressure and we said that peer pressure is when someone or a group of people convince you to do something you do not want to do, or when you force yourself, or when you force yourself to dress, to speak, to behave or do certain things so that you can gain acceptance into a certain group. Okay, so we talked about that as well. Uh, we looked at the life of Peter and we looked at the first example of how peer pressure, what peer pressure can be able to do to you. And we looked at Peter and we realized that this was somebody who was really close to the inner sanctum of Jesus Christ himself. He saw the miracles that Jesus did. He saw the, the healings that Jesus did. Jesus himself called him. He was able to walk on water when Jesus told him, come and bid him to come and step onto the water. He was able to walk on water, something which no other human being was able to do at that time. But at the time when Jesus was arrested, he denied Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the crowds that were around him. Because the crowd saw him as one of Jesus' followers. And he decided that he will not be uh, in a, he's, he's not going to be accounted as part of Jesus' uh, disciples. And after that, we see that uh, the cock crowed. And after the cock crowed, that's when he remembered, ah, Jesus warned me of this very thing. Jesus said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And so, that was, uh, we looked at that example, the first example of how Peter succumbed to peer pressure. 
Uh, we also looked at the second example. The second example was in the book of Galatians chapter two. And in Galatians chapter two, Peter wrote to the people of Galatians about the story of, uh, about, uh, sorry, Paul wrote to the Galatians about Peter's behavior. And, and Peter, who was an apostle, was an apostle to the Jews. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. But in, in the church at Antioch, at the very beginning, Peter would associate, it, would associate both with Jews and with Gentiles. But at some point he saw when uh, certain Jewish believers started pointing fingers at him, you know, we are Jews, we are superior to Gentiles and so on and so forth. Peter then stopped eating with the Gentiles and decided only to eat with the Jews. And we can see it was because of the peer pressure, uh, his, I want to call it his tribe, the peer pressure of his tribe. How can you who are a Jew be seen to be eating with Gentiles, whom we consider to be unclean, whom we consider not to be of our own tribe, okay? So yes, so Peter again succumbed to peer, peer pressure uh, in this particular circumstance. And because of that, he began in influencing other believers like Barnabas, who was with him. He began influencing Bar Barnabas not to eat with other Gentile believers, but only to sit with the Jews. And that was not a very good picture for the body of Jesus Christ. Then again, we also looked at, um, sorry, I'm trying to move my slides. We looked at how the Holy Spirit was able to transform Peter from being a disciple to being an apostle, how his double-mindedness was transformed, how his destiny was transformed from being a mere follower, a denier of Christ, to somebody who became the pillar of the early church, somebody who proclaimed the gospel boldly, from somebody who failed to walk in miraculous power, uh, even as Jesus told them to walk on water, yes, he began walking, but he was overcome by fear, to somebody who began doing signs and wonders and miracles, healings, you know. Uh, he would give his handkerchief and would go out and, and people would be healed when they placed the handkerchief on people's uh, bodies. Huh? Uh, he says his, his shadow, he would, he, he would walk and his shadow would cross over people who were sick and they would all be healed. And we see Peter was, was transformed at that time by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within him. And we're going to look at a bit of the power of the Holy Spirit in overcoming in overcoming peer pressure in a short while. So we looked at that. We, we saw that um, as a disciple, Peter made very many mistakes. But in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, Peter learned from those mistakes and became a, a, a very important apostle and the pillar of the foundation of the church to which we belong today. Okay? We also looked at uh, what, what, what is it that peer pressure seek, what, what, what does peer pressure seek to do? And we said that peer pressure seeks to impose the beliefs, the attitudes, the values, the behavior of the group, the styles, the tastes, the appearances, the language of the group, they seek to impose it to you. Okay, so if everybody is putting on uh, mo mohawk, I don't know if that's the, 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 the latest ha hairstyle these days, the mohawk hairstyle, you have to put on the mohawk hairstyle so that you can fit in, okay? If people are putting on what? Tattoos, okay? The people who put tattoos on their neck, so that's, 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 that's a system, that's a style that the group would want to impose on you. For you to feel accepted, for you to feel in the mix, you have to put on an attitude. So that's what peer pressure does. The beliefs, the attitudes, the values, the tastes, the style, the appearance of the group seeks to be imposed onto you as an individual. So here's my question to you guys. And uh, I'd ask maybe one or two people, uh, maybe Grace, if you could, you could admit one or two people, what kind of peer pressure do we face as teenagers today? 
as teens and young adults. What kind of peer pressure are you facing today? Hello? Anybody who can share? Um, hi. Hi. So, <clears throat> um, peer pressure, especially in our generation, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, going out for partying. You'll, yeah. you'll have a group of friends. We'll be like, ah, it's Friday. Let's go to a club and things like that. So you'll be like, I can't be left out. Let me go out because my friends also going out. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. That's a very, very uh, important uh, perspective you've given us, and it is a, it is, it is that kind of peer pressure transcends generations. It was there during our time. It was there before for those who are before us. It was there even up to today. The, the, the pressure to go out and party. Thank you, thank you, Andrew. Who else? One more person. Hi. Hi. Um, doing drugs, because you'll feel like you're not among the group because everyone is doing it, so you'll feel less of them. So people okay. tend to do. Thank you, thank you. Um, who was that, by the way? Sami? Mish. 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 Oh, yes, Mish. Thank you. Listen, guys, there's a lot of pressure out there to do drugs, to, um, to simply test. You know, they say, Onja, to just test, you know, it's cool. You know, it's, it's, it'll make you feel nice. It'll make you feel, those days when we were young, we used to be told, it'll make you feel iry. You know, it'll make you feel super, superior, you know. So there's also peer pressure, not just to engage in not, 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 uh, to, not just to engage in the party, but also to try out drugs. And there are different drugs out there. There's alcohol, there's beer, there's changa, there's bangi, there's cocaine, there's uh, uh, methamphetamines, those, those, those drugs. Uh, there are even drugs that are coming out today that are supposed to be uh, medication, but are being misused because they give some kind of a high in the brain. So those are the kind of peer pressure that we, 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 we face today. Any girls in the, in the group, Angel, what kind of peer pressure are you facing? Any girls? No girls. I saw so many girls. Amy, not Amy, sorry. Angel, Natasha. Hi. Um, Jesse, yes. Uh, peer pressure to dress in a certain way. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you. Peer pressure to dress in a certain way. To behave in a certain way? Dress in a certain way. To dress, okay. What kind of dressing? Like uh, wearing um, short, short outfit, short like leggings or skirts. Yeah. Yes. Other people are doing. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, I, I believe that's Marisa. Uh, girls are facing a lot of peer pressure and, and you know, girls face a lot of peer pressure in terms of their appearance. That they have to dress in a certain way to look attractive. They have to dress in a certain way to look modern. They have to dress in a certain way to be accepted, to be of a certain level, of a certain standard, or to be uh, of, of, a, of, of a modern or contemporary look. Okay, so there's a lot of peer pressure in all 
different circumstances. So let's just move forward and, and get an understanding of, uh, of how we can, how we normally succumb to peer pressure. So the question is, we've all, I'm, I want to assume here that we've all <clears throat> uh, faced these kinds of peer pressure. How then do we succumb to peer pressure? Number one, the impact of peer pressure depends on the group to which you belong. Okay, so if your, your group really, if, if your group cannot accept you and your belief system as you are, they will put a lot of pressure uh, onto you. Negative company will always direct you towards wrong activities. So imagine uh, you have, it's Friday, it's Friday evening and everybody is calling you, let's go to the party. Let's go to the disco. Let's go and, you know, have fun and, and party the night away. If that, if that group has got negative belief systems, that is where they're going to direct you. So negative company, if you associate yourself with those kinds of company, you will be directed towards those kinds of activities. The other side is, if you associate yourself with positive company, they will help you become good individuals. So for example, if your group is positive, looks at the positive things to do, they look at exercise, hey, let's go and play football. Fine, you know, that helps you. It helps you build relationships. It helps you build your physical um, uh, foundations. It helps you, you know, it just keeps you entertained in a, in a much better way than going to party. So positive company, will also help you become a, a, a good individual, okay? Company that focuses on positive things, you know, knowledge of the things of God, developing yourself, developing your personality, developing your character. If you have no solid values, then also you will succumb to peer pressure. And we'll look at that in the next, um, in the next upcoming slides. Values are very, very important. And I'd like to ask each and every one of you, what are your values? What values do you stand for? And you know what values are? Values are what make you who you are. Values are what are the things that you will never negotiate about. If I say honesty is my value, if somebody tells me to go and lie on their behalf, I will never negotiate about that because I uphold honesty as one of my main values. So if you don't have solid values, if your values are a bit weak, of course, you can be a funny heavy, you'll, you'll keep leaning towards that side and you'll very slowly, you will succumb to that peer pressure. If you have a weak spiritual foundation, we talked about this last week. If your spiritual foundation is weak, you're not grounded in God's word, you just uh, come to church for the sake of it. You don't pray individually. You don't have a relationship, a close relationship with God. You will be swept away by peer pressure. So it is very important to ensure that your spiritual foundation is very, very solid. And Jesus talked about that. You know, he said, um, he who builds his house on the solid rock is the one who was wise. So the, 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 the waves, you know, the, the floods came, the wind blew, but his house stood. But if you have a weak spiritual foundation, you're building your house on sinking sand. And we'll come, we'll look at that deeper. Fear again, we looked at fear in the case of, um, of, of Peter. If you are directed by fear, peer pressure will overcome you. The Bible says we, we do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. 365 times in the Bible. Do not fear. And the number one fear among teenagers would be the fear of being left out. Yeah, I fear. How will people look at me? You know, I fear. Okay. You know, if I don't dress like this, uh, they will say I'm a shao. Meaning to a ushago. I'm not modern. I'm not hip. Okay, so that fear, fear of being left out causes us to succumb to peer pressure. And again, fear also goes together with low self-esteem. How do you consider yourself? Am I, do I see myself the way God sees me? 
Am I the, 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 the wonder, fearfully and wonderfully made person that God created me to be? Do I see my giftings? Do I see greatness in myself? If I don't see greatness in myself, I will succumb to low self-esteem. And I want to encourage you today, please look at yourself from the eyes of God. If your name is Amarisa, God does not just see you as a small girl. God sees you as a great, great woman of God. You're Amarisa and you're, you have a great and a wonderful future ahead. Every time you wake up, say that to yourself and help build your own personal self-esteem. Okay? All right. So we talked about how do we overcome peer pressure? Uh, last week we talked about covering your lamp and shining your light. And we talked about Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 and verse 16. And the two are very closely intertwined. Okay? So if for those who are able to overcome uh, peer pressure, you must shine your light. Never hide the fact that you're a child of God. Never hide the fact that you're born again. Never hide the fact that you stand for what is right, you stand for what is good, and you stand for righteousness. If you hide that lamp, if you, if you, if you go to a place and uh, people are talking negatively about Christians, and you keep silent and you're a Christian, imagine what will happen, okay? You'll be swayed to go the other way. So we talked about, in terms of shining your light, shining your light, Galatians 5.22, that talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you shine your light, the fruit of the Holy Spirit become manifest. They can be seen among your friends. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Before I got born again, when I was, uh, I was j just after university, most of my friends got born again. Most of the people that uh, I used to hang out with got born again. But whereas I was still in the world, I could see the fruit of their life. These people have gotten born again. Their, their faces have changed. The way they dress has changed. The way they speak they has changed. Everything in their life is changing for the positive. And I decided, no, look, I mean, I can't be left out. I need to join. Uh, I need to taste this fruit. What is it about being born again? Having a renewed mind, we talked about uh, Romans chapter 12 that says, do not be conformed to the world, okay? But be transformed by the renewing of the mind. In other words, what he says here is, let's not focus, the world should not tell us what to do, okay? It is because our mind is being renewed by the Holy Spirit. We are the ones who give direction to the world. So, Remember, Jesus said that everything in the world, the world and everything that is in it is going to pass away. Everything, those beautiful cars, those uh, discos, those beautiful dresses, those outfits, all those things will pass away. But for us, we need to focus on the things that are eternal. And we can only do that by having our mind renewed, not focusing too much, in what the world offers, we're focusing a lot on what our Lord is offering us. And we'll also look at uh, eternal rewards and what, what kind of eternal rewards that awaits us. You know, somebody asked a question um, uh, the other day. Actually, yesterday, I was listening to a certain message. And somebody asked a question, would you rather take 100 shillings today or 10,000 shillings after one week? What would you choose? I leave that for you. Would you rather I give you 1,000 shillings today or 10,000 shillings after one week? I mean, if you are a logical person, you'll say, I'd rather take the 10,000. I'd rather wait for that one week so that I can get the 10,000 shillings. Well, that's exactly what we are. Here in this world today, what we are getting is just 1,000 shillings. But in the life to come, in eternal life, we are getting 10,000. We're getting much better, much greater, much more valuable. Know your identity in Christ. If you don't know who you are in Jesus Christ, if you, you know, Jesus did not just give us salvation. Salvation was not the end of it. Jesus gave us much, much greater than salvation, than purchasing us for eternal life, 
through his blood. He gave us victory over sin and death. He gave us the power to become sons. He gave us the, uh, we are joint heirs with him. So everything that God has given to Christ, he has given to us also. We are able to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, plus many, many, many other things. So we need to know who we are, what is our identity in Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. So how do we overcome peer pressure? Listen, it's okay to say no. If you have friends, it doesn't matter how close you are to those friends. It is perfectly okay to say no. Okay? If a friend is a really good friend, if you tell them no, they will understand. So always know it is okay to say no. Be confident in yourself and in the decisions that you make. If you, make, if you are making a decision that is contrary to your group and you're confident that that is the right thing, make it and be confident in yourself and in your decision and know that you've taken the right step. Okay? Somebody somewhere will be watching you and somebody somewhere will be faced with a similar situation at some point and they will take a similar decision. And that's how we are called to be the salt of the the salt of the earth. We bring saltiness, we bring flavor, we bring truth, we bring the light into the world. Be assertive, stand up for yourself, let others know that you don't support what they are doing. If, there's some, if something wrong is being done and you are there, okay, you don't just watch it, you know, you don't just sit there and act like nothing is happening, stand up and say, be assertive, what is happening here is wrong. It is not just wrong for me. It is not just wrong for you. It is wrong for the group. And it is not going to bear good fruit. Okay? So be assertive. If something wrong is being done, if somebody is planning something to steal somebody's property, somebody is planning to destroy the, somebody's property, somebody is planning to steal, somebody is taking a, a, a phone or a laptop to go and, you know, to, to search around. You see, and it's your friend is searching around for pornographic video or pornographic pictures. If it is wrong, you need to be assertive. Tell that person, this is wrong. I will not withstand it. Okay? So stand up for yourself. And we're saying one other way to overcome peer pressure, suggest a positive alternative. If people are doing things that are wrong, if people are going to party on Friday evenings, people are going to take drugs, suggest an alternative, okay? We're supposed to come with an uh, opposing spirit. If, if, if the spirit of the enemy comes and suggests going to drink and, and, and do alcohol and drugs, come with a, a positive alternative. Why don't we go for Acacia? Why don't we go and watch a good positive movie that can teach us something to learn? Okay, why don't we go, let's arrange for a sleepover so that we can play board games, you know? We can play chess, we can play uh, drafts, we can play Scrabble, or those kinds of things. We arrange for a quiz night for ourselves, yeah? Let's suggest positive alternatives. Let's be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, amen? Let's talk about the foolish, the wise and the foolish virgins. Uh, this is in Matthew uh, chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13. I don't know who has a Bible there. If you could read for us very quickly. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13. Uh, who can read for us? Marisa? Yes? Can you read for us Matthew 25? 1 to 13? Okay, let me, let me get it. Let me get it. Oh, I thought you had your Bible ready. May I read? Yes, please. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, it says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 
like this. Mm. Once there were 10 young women who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any extra oil with them. While the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the women began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten women woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered, There is not enough for you and for us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish women went off to buy some oil, and while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later, the other women arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not, I don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, be on your guard then, because you do not know the day or the hour. Wow. This is a very powerful parable. It always makes me shudder every time I, I read this parable because I always tell myself, God, let, not, let me not be found among the five foolish virgins. The 10 virgins are a picture of the church of Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of lessons to learn here, even for us in terms of peer pressure. You cannot dandia on somebody else's. Uh, you cannot dandia on somebody else's anointing, or on somebody else's efforts, on somebody else's uh, attempts to to draw closer to his to his God. Okay, and there are several lessons here for us. It is a very poignant teaching. Um, hopefully, one day we'll have time to go in detail over this parable and some of the things that we can learn. So essentially, um, in this, it talks about the wise and the foolish virgins. But I want us to focus a little bit on the wise and also look a little bit on the foolish. How can we be wise when faced with peer pressure? And how can we, what are the ways that we can act out of foolishness? A wise person fears to disobey God's word. So you do not even attempt to disobey God's word, okay? And a wise person seeks after knowledge and wisdom, knowledge, wisdom and understanding. So if something is out there and you're being offered something that does not help build you in knowledge, wisdom and understanding, you're actually following something that is foolish. Okay? So fools actually despise wisdom and instruction. And that is in Proverbs chapter 4, uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. A wise person will seek advice. Okay, if you're being told to do something that you feel somewhere in your heart is not right, okay? If your friends are telling you, look, I mean, all the other girls are putting on short skirts. Why don't you try? Let's go to um, Gikosh or somewhere else. We buy <laughs> short skirts so we can look, you know, hip. Seek advice. Why not talk to somebody who has been there before? Ask, Okay. A wise person will seek advice and will listen to correction. But fools will ignore advice and resent correction. Okay? A fool reacts to situations. It could be reacting through anger. It could be reacting through excitement. But a fool will quickly react to the situations. Just look at those, the foolish virgins. The first thing they thought was what? Look, there's nowhere else we can buy oil at this time. It's the midnight hour. Let's go to those who have their lamps full of oil and tell them to sell them to us. How is that even possible? You mean you couldn't even think that at some point your oil is going to run out? You couldn't think? Yeah? So let's not react to situations immediately whether it be it by anger, be it by excitement, be it by disappointment, let's not just act, react foolishly. But use wisdom in every circumstance. A wise person looks ahead, anticipates where their decisions and actions will lead. 
Remember the foolish virgins. They, 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 there was a very huge distinction between the wise and the foolish virgins. The foolish virgins knew that, look, we are going to wait for the bridegroom. What if the bridegroom does not come at the 12th hour? We'll need light for the whole night. So let's carry enough oil. But what about the foolish virgins? They did not anticipate. They did not expect that probably the, 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 the bridegroom is going to stay beyond 10 p.m. So they only carried a little oil. Okay? And their lamps ran out of oil and they had no light. So a wise person looks ahead. You anticipate what decisions you need to take and what will they lead to. So imagine every time that you are pressured to do something that does not feel comfortable in your heart, in your heart, ask yourself, if I do this thing, what will be the consequences? What will this decision lead to? What will this action lead to? If I'm to test this role of Bangi, what is the end game? If I'm to test this bottle of Tasca, you know, I've never tested Tasca. My friends are, are doing it and they're okay. Let me try it. Where will it lead to? Remember Proverbs 20, 22, Fools do not anticipate the consequences of their actions and thus repeatedly wind up in trouble. Always ask yourself, what are the consequences? How can I avoid those consequences? There's nothing wrong in being pragmatic. Okay, pragmatic is an English word of, of being careful. Okay, so let's be careful with what we do. Let's be careful with what we say. Let's be careful with what people tell us to do. So, our choice of friends also influences what we become. Remember, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, he who walks with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. That is classic peer pressure. If there is a scripture I want you to go home with today, take this scripture in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. I have seen so many people who have been destroyed by the kind of life that they lived, by the kind of things that they did, by the kind of lifestyle that they chose just because people told them that was the right thing to do. Trust me, peer pressure does not only happen, like I said last week, peer pressure does not only happen among teenagers. Even us as adults, we face a lot of peer pressure every day. We face peer pressure to conform. <laughs> We've, we, we face peer pressure, I mean, we face peer pressure, where do you live? Oh, you live in Dandora? How can somebody like you live in Dandora? You know, those, those kinds of things. We face a lot of peer pressure every day. Choose whom it is that you will work with. We must be alert to our actions and what they will do to us. Again, this is a repeat of what I just said earlier. Let's anticipate, let's know what is the fruit what fruit is produced by what I'm about to do? And last but not least, what are the eternal consequences of your actions? This life, like I said, would you rather take a thousand shillings today or would you rather take 10,000 shillings one week later? What are the eternal consequences of what we are doing today? Is what I am doing, remember, the Bible says that everything that we are doing, that even we are saying today, everything that we are speaking is being recorded somewhere. And we will give a full account for everything that we do. What are the eternal consequences? Does this, do I deposit into my eternal account in terms of fruit? 
or do I take away from my internal account in terms of judgment? So what I'm about to do right now, will it endear me to my God and to my Father? Or will it send me somewhere where I do not want to go? What are the internal consequences of your actions? Ask yourself this. Okay? Amen. Amen. Right. So quickly, let's just go back to what lessons did you learn from this story? Have you ever behaved like that mouse? The mouse with four tails. Remember the mouse with four tails? What tails have you tried to cut so that you can fit in? And are there any tails that you're ready to cut right now so that you can fit into certain groups? Based on all that we have learned today, I hope you'll take positive lessons from what we have learned today. Please go back and reflect and know that you have been created, you're wonderfully and beautifully created by God. You're peculiar. Amen. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. Okay? You have been called forth to show the praises of your God. Okay? So, even as we close, Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. Uh, very quickly, can somebody just read that? This, this image here actually summarizes what that, that verse says. Can somebody please read Second Peter 1, 5 to 7? I can read. Yes. Okay. Um. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. Love. Fantastic. So make every effort to add to your faith goodness. So to goodness, keep growing. In other words, what the scripture says, keep adding something to your life. Keep adding knowledge. Keep, don't, don't, don't rest at knowledge. Keep add self-control on top. Don't rest there. Add perseverance. Don't rest there. Add godliness. Don't rest there. Add mutual affection. And to that, add love. The Bible says, if you love, you have fulfilled the law. There's nothing else. If you love, you have fulfilled the law. Okay? So let's be, let's make sure that we are growing in all that we do. Listen, wrong is wrong. Even if everybody is doing it, if everybody is doing it and it is wrong, it is still wrong. Right is right, even if nobody is doing it. So stand out. Okay? It's better to walk alone than with a crowd going in the wrong direction. So do what you feel, what you know is right. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you Amen. so much, Teacher Oliver. Thank I you. you can hear me. I can't think of any other better way that could have been delivered. That's just awesome. And uh, very much uh, on point in terms of reminding us uh, the sort of pressure that we, 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 we exposed to. And I like the fact that uh, Teacher Oliver is even mentioning that not only teenagers, uh, really go through some peer pressure. Even us as adults, the, the, the pressure to conform, you know, as Teacher Oliver was saying, even just the place where you stay, uh, somebody is asking you, oh, you stay in this other end of town. Oh, I stay in this, this other end of town. And you begin to compare yourself. 
uh, the type of car you drive, the type of shoes you put on, all this, and I think this message is relevant to all of us, and more so uh, in this context as teenagers, there's so much peer pressure. But we can overcome uh, uh, some of these things. We can overcome all of them, not just some, but all of them, by having the right anchor in our lives. I think it's so important to be content, uh, to have some sort of contentment in your life that should actually help you uh, deal with so much pressure. Um, permit me now to uh, shift uh, to another gear, and this gear is the prayer gear, uh, just sort of anchoring on some of those scriptures that uh, Teacher Oliver has uh, mentioned. And uh, we all know that prayer is such an, uh, an important value. I like what he was saying, values. What are some of the values that we need to have to even help us deal with pressure? Your values are so important. These are the things that you stand for, regardless of what people are telling you. And I think uh, as kingdom uh, citizens or children of God, prayer or that chance just to be able to connect. I consider prayer is just like, you know, all of us, I'm sure at some point we have, or rather we have phones, right? And your phone will run out of power. You have to plug it on for you to, you know, uh, uh, add some power to work so that your phone can run. Prayer is something like we can, if we use, uh, uh, use that analogy, prayer is just like going back to God, plugging onto his system and asking God, I need strength. Yes, I need strength to continue running. And also just showing and reminding God that I depend on you. Yeah. So uh, prayer is actually a way of plugging in back into, to, uh, into God's system, asking him to give us strength to overcome all that um, uh, the challenges that we go through, the challenges that come our ways. So uh, let me just share my screen so that uh, we can have some session of, of prayer. And um, of course, bearing in mind what Teacher Oliver has just shared with us. Are you able to see my screen? Can you all see my screen? It's not clear. It's weird. We can't see. <laughs> oh, you can't see. Oh. Yeah. Let me let me just do it again. I think uh, share screen. Screen one. So what about that? No, mine is still black. Yeah. Okay. Okay now. It's okay now. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Good. So uh, I just want to first, first of all, take some time uh, uh, to, to do this, just to give thanks to God. Uh, you know, we call God our Ebenezer, and more so in this season, we need to be able to, we should not be presumptuous of where we are now. I know a lot of people have gone through so much. Uh, we are still alive. We've overcome many things. And it's not because of our own strength. It's because... God has been with us. So Psalms 136 uh, verse 1 reminds us that we need to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love has actually helped us to come this far. Even if you think of uh, the teaching this uh, morning, his love has actually helped us. If you think of the things that we've been able to uh, overcome, whether it's sickness, whether it's just being able to, your parents uh, enabling, I mean, being in a position to put food on the table, it's not for, we cannot take such things for granted. So I just want us to spend uh, uh, about two minutes just thanking God uh, for being with us, bringing us this far, particularly in this very turbulent season. So uh, take, your, take two minutes, then I will request um, Yvette, Yvette, I'm sure you're there. After mm -hmm. the two minutes, you can just give thanks. So let's just give thanks to God for his goodness to us this far. Heavenly Father, we are so, so grateful to you for this far you've brought us. We can surely say you've been the Ebenezer. Walk oh Lord, us. in this season of turbulence, in this season of uncertainty, so many things happening. Oh God, you 
helped us, you have helped us, you have guided us, you've walked with us as families, as children, as teenagers, as communities, as nations. Oh Lord, you've been with us. There's so much that has been happening around us. Oh, even many that have lost dear ones, oh God. You've been with us, you've comforted us, oh God. Even those that have lost their means of livelihood, still you've been our, our anchor. And Lord, this morning, we just want to say thank you for being with us. Thank you for walking with us even in this season. Thank you for ordering our steps and just helping us through each and every detail of our life. There are certain things that we do not know about, that even you shielded us from them. Oh Lord, we are so grateful. We are so grateful. And Lord, right now we just say thank you for being with us. And Lord, we continue to ask you to just go before us, oh God, and let your glory be, uh, to let your glory watch our back. Thank you, Lord, for enveloping us with your presence, putting your angels around us, oh God. We thank you for you being the Ebenezer. We are so grateful, oh God. We are so grateful. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, you can give thanks. Okay, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you at this particular moment, oh God. We just honor you, God. We appreciate your holy name, O oh King of all glory. Mighty Jesus, God, we say thank you for watching over us, Almighty God. Even at this particular moment, that it has quite a harsh moment to, to, to many, God. You've been there for us, O oh King of all glory. Mighty Father, you've been comforting those who... Who have lost their their loved ones so king of all glory even for those who are affected mighty father may you just release your healing upon them oh god for you said god that you you'll make sure your people enjoy abundant security and health oh king of all glory mighty king of all glory how i pray god that may your favor be upon us oh god in thousands and thousands of generations oh king of all glory mighty father may your favor Show all around us, Almighty God. May your presence go before us, O King of all glory, and behind us, Almighty Father. Besides us, all around us, O God, all we need is your King of all glory. Father, you say that we call unto you, and you shall hear us, O God. You shall show us all the mighty and great things we've never thought of, O King of all glory. Mighty God, how we just call upon your favor, O God. We call upon your presence, O King of all glory. Father, for you said that you'll set yourself upon the proud, against the proud, O God. But when we show your favor, when you show your favor, you show it to the humbled ones, O King of all glory. Mighty Father, we are humbling ourselves, O God, at this moment. God, may you just have your way, O God. Show us the right direction to go, O God. And may you give us that desire to always stay in your King of all glory. Forgive us for every part that we wronged your mighty Father. All we need is you, O King of all glory. May you lead us, O God. Direct us. Show us the right direction to go, O God. How I pray, yes. God, you're going to be with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us, Almighty God, for that is your word, O God. Mighty Father, all we need is you. And I know you're going to be with us. It will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, I do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Yvette. Uh, just the next prayer point is um, in light of what we've just discussed. And I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm sure em em Emanuela Lela, you're there. You just give thanks after we just uh, reach this point. And again, we'll just take maybe uh, uh, about a minute to pray through this particular prayer point. Uh, it's prayer for strength, uh, prayer for strength to overcome every form of pressure. We've talked about the pressure, peer pressure, uh, pressure from friends and even from just from within. And if you look at what First John 4, 4 says, you dear children, you are from God and have overcome them because what, the one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. Um, 
it's actually a, re a, a reminder that God who is in us is able to give us strength to overcome every form of pressure. And Exodus 14, 4 says, the Lord shall fight for you. It's actually a reminder that God is fighting for us. Even in all that we are going through, uh, God is fighting for us. And I also reminded of what Teacher Oliver mentioned about the wise and the foolish builder. You know, we've listened to Teacher Oliver sharing with us from the Bible, which is basically the Word of God. And the Word of God is saying it's important that we listen, um, we listen uh, to what he's told us and also apply. So that is the wise one. But the one who is not, who does not apply what he has been told is a foolish person, is a foolish man. So this part, this day, as uh, we've been taught, uh, we need to be able to apply that which we've been taught. We need to apply that which God is reminding us that we need to do to be able to deal with pressure. And of course, there is the Second Timothy one seven that says, "The spirit that we have is not is not a spirit of fear, but is of power and of love and of self control." So upon all the pressure, the peer pressure that we expose to to do certain things that are against our values. Really, God has given us the spirit of self-control. He's given us a spirit of love. He is in the inside of us to be able to help us overcome. So let's pray along those lines. And I will ask uh, Emmanuel Alela to just give thanks. Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful again this morning because you reminded us that you who is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. Even the pressure, the peer pressure that we are exposed to, to do certain things that are not in line with our values, oh God. You will help us to overcome because you who is in us is greater than the one that's in the world. Thank you because we are those that listen and apply. That which we run with the word of your word. That we need to, to over, that we can overcome. We need to plug in into you that we may be able to overcome. Lord, help us to apply that which you've been taught. Power of love and the wise men. Jesus and applies. Oh God, help us not to be foolish ones who do not apply that which, which uh, you've, you, you've taught them. Thank you, Lord, because you've taught us this morning. Help us to apply this into our lives. Thank you, Lord, because even the spirit that you've given us is not spirit of fear, but it's a spirit of power, it's a spirit of love, it's a spirit of sound mind, it's a spirit of self-control. And therefore, Lord, we thank you because your spirit gives us strength to overcome. Your spirit gives us a sense of self-control to overcome the peer pressure, to overcome doing drugs, to overcome watching pornographic materials, to overcome, uh, to overcome doing things that are not right in your uh, before you, oh God. And therefore, we thank you because your spirit is with us. We thank you because we are doers of your word. We thank you because we are those that listen and do. Thank you because you who is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. And therefore, we overcome. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel Alela. Yes. Just give let's, thanks. Let's let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Oh Lord, we thank you that even though there is this pandemic, we've been able to have our Zoom lessons, oh Lord. Oh Lord, we pray about uh we pray about peer pressure, oh Lord. We pray that you will be able you'll be able to overcome peer pressure, oh Lord. You say in your heart, Lord. You say in your word that you've given us power to choose, O oh Lord. And, O oh Lord, we pray that we'll be able to choose our friends wisely. O oh Lord, we pray that you'll give us the confidence to say no, O oh Lord. That, O oh Lord, you'll give us the power, you'll give us the gift to be assertive, O oh Lord. We pray that you'll be with us as we choose our friends so that we'll overcome this. We'll overcome, uh, we'll overcome peer pressure, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Okay, now they just, I know uh, in the interest of time, I want us to move very fast. Um, there's the place of feeling like you are condemned because if one or the other, you've fallen. I know there's so many things that happen to us. And, uh, uh, you know, Romans 6, 14 says, for sin shall no longer 
be your master because you are no longer under the law but under grace and of course we should not abuse grace by going out there and doing all sorts of uh, things all manner of things the, the red line and uh, there are cases where things don't go our way and you know you can always feel some sense of condemnation and this that sense of condemnation can drive us further into even doing worse things. So this morning, I just want us to also pray that God will give us strength to bounce back. Where we've fallen, probably going into doing things, doing drugs, uh, in your secret moments, you just on pornography, God, just help us bounce back. Help us to, to let not sin, let not things that are not uh, in line with his kingdom be a hold on us again to just ask him to help us, to sort of repent and help us bounce back, not have any sense of condemnation in us. And let's just take that prayer point for a minute, then I'll give it. Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you, Lord, for you are a God of grace. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a chance to even uh, come back to you, even uh, where we've failed, where we've uh, broken the red, we've gone beyond the red lines in our lives, where we've done things that are not right. Lord, we pray and we repent, Lord. Wash us, wash us, wash us off any doubt that might be in us, in our mind. Thank you, Lord, for the transformation that continues to take place in our hearts and in our minds, oh God. Thank you because we shall not be condemned anymore because of your grace. Thank you because now there is no more condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. Lord, where we've gone wrong, where we've done things that are not clean, where we've touched things that are not clean, we repent, God. We repent and we ask you to help us to bounce back. We are so grateful because you grace abounds us. Thank you, Lord, for even when we were in sin, Lord, you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross. And we are so grateful that even this day, is uh, that blood is still present to wash away of every sin that may be in us. Oh God, help us to bounce back. Lord, we bless you, we honor you. We thank you because you are with us. We thank you because you continue to watch over us. You continue to protect us. We bless you. We honor you and we celebrate your love unto us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone. I just want, uh, as we wrap it up, I just want to take uh, a quick announcement. Uh, uh, just give me a minute so that I check it out. Uh, there's an announcement that uh, I just want to take very fast. Okay, um, I'm sure we all know that th th there is a teens career workshop that is coming up on the 11th. Teens career workshop that is coming up on the 11th July, and uh, it will be between 2 to 4 p.m. So you're invited. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's some information that will go out in, in, in due course. So look out for that. So it's going to be on the 11th teens career workshop, Saturday 11th uh, July uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. Some information will come through in due course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for finding time to join us. Uh, even those that are, uh, joined us via Facebook, we really appreciate and we bless you. We pray that uh, the, this message will help you review and reflect on your life and just see what you need to adjust so that you stay on course with what God is doing in your life. Uh, we request that you may like our Facebook page for those who joined us. Uh, like our Facebook page, please. And thank you so much. God bless you. I think... Uh, our uh, time is up and we're going to wrap. Let me just close with a word of prayer. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you so much for ministering unto us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your word that has come forth. O oh God, help us to be doers, to be listeners and doers of your word. Help us, O oh God, to apply those principles of your kingdom that has been taught to us this morning. We bless you and we honor you. We declare your blessings upon all of us as we go into this week. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen.